Hi there, I'm Roy, and I do product design here at Pitch. In this deck, I'll walk you through our icon design workflow and how we automated the process of bringing them into our code base. Our icon set contains over 680 icons at the moment, and it grows by the week. They come in three sizes, two styles, and we recently introduced an extra weight. The medium and small icons are used for the Pitch desktop and web app, the marketing website, and presentation gallery. Medium is the default that we use practically everywhere, and only a handful of icons also come in small. All our large icons are used exclusively inside the iOS and Android mobile apps. For styles, outline icons are the default style, and we turn them into filled when a UI element becomes active. Both our outline and filled icons use one pixel strokes and 1.5 pixel strokes for large icons, and we decided to introduce a thicker two pixel weight for a specific part of the product. A few months ago, we started working on a refresh for the player, the part of the product used for presenting, viewing, and embedding presentations. You can play back slide decks using the player. And for this distinct part of the product, we found a thicker weight for the controls to create a higher contrast for the buttons to be a better fit. We also deviated from the default style and used filled icons in the player instead for that same styling reason. At the end of last year, we revamped the layer structure and naming of our icons in Figma. The main goal was to make sure it's consistent and works flawlessly with Figma's component instances and keeps the color styles when changing icons inside components. Additionally, we used to have a process to flatten icons and create outlines for all the strokes. This was to make sure that the SVG shows up in production as intended. But with a bit of digging into improving this workflow, we discovered that you can use Boolean operations in Figma to combine shapes and paths, and it has the same effect as with flattening. So our process now is to create a combined layer called shape with our icon color style applied. And this way, it works great in Figma and for exporting to code. Naming is always a challenge. Pitch is constantly evolving. And so the need for new icons for those new features comes very frequently. For all our recently introduced icons, we stick to these naming conventions. For clarity, organization, and optimizing search, we do two things. Naming an icon as close as possible to their shape and metaphor, not feature name, and follow the structure of name property modifier to group categories and collections of icons close together. This is the goal. But the reality with an ever-evolving design system is that some of our icons are not following the standards yet. Some of the older icons that exist for over four years still need to get reworked. Here are two examples of icons in our current set. The bell that we use for notifications is available in the toolbar in the desktop app and in the tab bar in the mobile apps. So it comes in two sizes for those two platforms and in two styles to support the active states. The speech bubble we use for comments. In a few places, like badges, we needed a smaller icon to indicate the presence of comments. They are also part of the player controls, so we made a thicker weight for the medium field variant. There are several challenges around maintaining and using a big icon library like ours. We discovered eight areas that are slowing us down when working with icons specifically. That's a lot, so let's walk through all of them. We run into this in design all the time. What is the latest version? But when chatting to several designers and engineers internally, it became clear that the overhead with icons specifically was an outstanding annoyance. Can you just send me the icon I need for the feature I'm building? Then exporting from Figma, it's an unnecessarily cumbersome process. When you have multiple asset variants like we do, it creates even more friction around exporting. And in general, computers are made to do these repetitive tasks. It's what they are good at not as humans. And when you export, you likely need to tweak the file names. Keeping this consistent is a tedious task. And that's not even considering making a change to your naming convention of existing icons. Then you'd have to go over your entire icon set again to adjust it. In our situation, to get icons ready for use in the production app, we need to remove the fill property of the SVG. This is to make sure that they are displayed correctly in the app and work as intended with different colors. Doing that tweaking by hand is very annoying and error-prone work. And as I explained before, different types of icons are intended for different products. Manually uploading them to the correct directory is time-consuming. And then you discover your icons need to be tweaked. You now need to follow all of the previous steps of exporting, changing file names, tweaking the SVG, uploading to the right destination, and that's such a bummer. When you refresh some icons or change product features, 
outdated or unused icons often don't get cleaned up and linger around in the code base forever. This introduces the risk that an old icon that shouldn't get used anymore finds its way back into the app for a different feature. And lastly, we should not need the attention of two people to get icons into the product. But here we are, lots of back and forth to make it work, and there are much better ways we could spend our valuable time. In summary, this existing workflow has a bunch of small issues that all add up and create unnecessary overhead. What is the latest status? Exporting manually, file names that are easy to mess up, manual tweaks required for each SVG, uploading them to a specific directory, repeating all those steps if any tweaks are needed, old icons that don't get cleaned up, and the attention of two people always being required. So design and product are always evolving, and there's never a single handover moment, and that's it. Handover needs to be seamless and continuous. But how? What we need is design automation powering continuous handover, a design API. Meet Specify. Specify connects a source with a destination and takes the hassle out of any manual work needed. At the moment, they support Figma as a source and GitHub as a destination. We started using Specify for Icon specifically because this was one of our biggest pain points, but it can do so much more. I'm personally always skeptical when a new tool comes around or a feature by an existing tool gets introduced that aims to solve handover. But we started experimenting with Specify at the end of last year, and I think it delivers on the promise to distribute design to code. So let's dive in and see how this new tool helps us with automation and solving all the issues we ran into before. When we add icons to our library in Figma, we just need to set the export settings to SVG and Specify will pick it up. The app, as shown here, has a nice and clean overview for all synced assets and design tokens. And as a designer, we know if it's in Specify, we don't have to worry about it anymore. Here's a demo where I show adding a new arrow icon to our file synced in Specify. It has a small and medium sized variant, both intended for the desktop app, and we select the icon variants and set SVG as an export setting. Here, specify with our repository. It contains some color tokens and vector assets, and currently we have 68 icons synced. We can trigger a sync inside the specify app to get it into the system right away. This only takes a couple of seconds. And done. Now we have 70 icons. Specify then automatically triggers a pull request in GitHub that adds, removes, or changes icons in our defined output folders using some custom parsers and settings that we've defined. We're now basically done, but let's walk through a couple of things that have just happened here. Specify synchronizes automatically every 24 hours, but you can also trigger a sync inside their app or through the command line interface in case there is some urgency. We have set up a couple of custom parsers. They transform the output from Figma in a format we needed to, to then send it to GitHub. One parser is specifically for consistent naming, as you can see here. As long as the components and variant properties are named the right way in Figma, they will be consistent in our code base too. And no more manual file edits. Another parser with a few very straightforward SVGO optimizations automates removing the fill and stroke and adding a view box. In the specified configuration file, we defined a couple of output destinations so that our medium and small icons end up in the desktop and website icons folder, and the large icons only go into the folders for the mobile apps. Additionally, we're playing around with an experimental project for our design system. It's called Playbook. It's our very own super young internal project that serves as a playground and a place for component documentation. Besides our code base, we also sync icons with Playbook through the specify REST API. So just to emphasize, Specify is very unopinionated, and you can integrate it in just the way you need it. All of the existing challenges that I laid out before are solved with this new workflow powered by a design API. Assets in Specify are always the latest. Exporting is handled in an automated way. A parser makes sure that we have consistent file names. Another parser prepares the SVG file for production. Once the rules for the destination are set, you can forget about them I can find their way to the correct folder automatically. No more repetitive tasks for handover. Tweak an icon in Figma, the rest is automated. No more old icons in the code base either. Once deleted in Figma, they also get deleted from GitHub after approval. We focus on what we're good at. No more attention required from multiple people at the same time to make sure that the process is followed correctly. So no more handing over designs manually, 
but automation powered handovers triggered right from Figma. Click publish and you're done. We are experimenting with syncing colors now, and we're very excited about the initial results so far. That's one additional benefit. You don't need to go all in and can integrate with specify bit by bit. That's it. I hope this was helpful. I would definitely recommend giving specify a try. And in case you have any questions, their team is super responsive and ready when you need to get up to speed.